All right, everyone, we start off today talking about SCOTUS uh, dismissing the initial Texas case. It's a little bit more complex than that. Um, it doesn't even technically deny the possibility of them taking up a case in a slightly reformed manner, but I'll get into that. Uh, for those of you watching on YouTube, I would ask that you look at the pinned comment or the links in the description. Uh, I create videos on five different video sites, and the other four being Rumble, Odyssey, BitChute, and Dailymotion. Uh, YouTube is algorithmically manipulating its results and shadow banned me. Um, for instance, I'm, I'm not visible to new users who aren't already subscribed. Um, notifications are by default off for all people, it seems. And so they're trying to starve me on the site. Those sites don't abuse me. Um, so if you want to follow me on one of those, or if you do prefer YouTube, I would ask that you uh, share the link to this video out on some other platform where it will be searchable, because again, it's not on YouTube. Uh, getting that out of the way, I hate to have to say that every morning at this point, for the foreseeable future. Um, this particular case, and this is without dissent, uh, this is a unanimous 9-0 to zero decision, uh, including all three of the justices Trump put on SCOTUS, which uh, uh, is funny because I was told that they would be tyrants and they would do everything Trump wanted. It's almost like the judiciary is actually independent and the worst concerns of the left have been continuously wrong. Uh, this is a procedural decision. Let me explain. The dismissal of this case has to do with the fact that Texas, which is the initial plaintiff enjoined by other states um, on, on this case against Pennsylvania and these other uh, groups, um, it, it didn't have the standing. The idea is that the state of Texas at large, uh, through its uh, you know, legal capability, doesn't have the right to legally challenge the, the, the election proposals and situation of other states. I believe they are now attempting to retool it um, to have a different listed plaintiff, essentially take the same basic case and put it forward, and then Texas as a state, I guess, can join on to it afterwards. I believe they are attempting to do that at this time. Technically speaking, the SCOTUS decision is correct. Technically speaking, the, the state of Texas, I, I agree that the Constitution of the United States, the Elector's Clause, uh, in combination with some of what happened in these states, I do agree that it violated those states' constitutions and the U.S. Constitution. But you have to have a plaintiff. It's like, for example, if I think that you have, if I think person A has abused person B, I can't start a case against person A as the plaintiff and sue on person B's behalf. I would be found to have no standing in the court because I'm, I can't be a plaintiff because I'm not an aggrieved party. I can join on and I can go give evidence, I can state things in support of person B, but they, they would have to, in that case, start the case. The problem is that Texas itself cannot, cannot directly uh, be aggrieved by another state's uh, election laws, even if they are in, in, within the context of that state illegal. You need a plaintiff who is aggrieved in order to take the case forward. I would think, ironically enough, that would require having a litigant in the state of Pennsylvania initially for that state and, and, and also individuals in these other states. Now, that won't be hard to do. There are plenty of political figures there, plenty of constituents there that would feel aggrieved. They can potentially sign on to a case. Texas can certainly uh, file off uh, evidence, give testimony, you know, through their you know, attorney general or whoever they would be sending. I believe it would be their AG. Uh, they can file a brief with the court. They can make it clear that they construe it that way, but they can't be directly aggrieved by the voting practices of another state. That being said, the fact that this was unanimous and, and rather brisk um, is a bad sign, certainly, for anyone who supports Donald Trump, because it shows what the court is leaning towards. The problem with SCOTUS simply not taking up the case is that the whole population right now feels completely alienated. I would think that it's in SCOTUS' best interest, regardless of what their decision is, to eventually take the case up. If there's no actual legitimate plaintiff, though, on the docket, because one state can't sue another for that reason, you have to try again. Um, there's no guarantee that if they take the same case, file it with a different plaintiff, that SCOTUS won't immediately hear it. I'm sure that some of the justices there uh, in SCOTUS would like to. They'd like to weigh in on it. At the very least, SCOTUS can do some healing for half the population. If you've got half the population in, in, in a hyper-political climate, hyper-partisan climate as well, um, very polarized. I would think it'd be better to have half the population be, feel okay than 0% of the population. 
because right now it seems like everyone's alienated. Uh, Biden fans are still frothing with anger at everything Trump does, still blaming him for the sky falling. Trump fans feel cheated. Um, SCOTUS can only side with one side, but at least that side will have some closure. At least some of the population will go back to reasonable levels of normal. Um, and SCOTUS, as I pointed out, should act in its own self-interest. I mean, it's clearly, I do have a bias in this case based on my understanding of the election, the shenanigans that totally didn't happen in the election. It was totally fair, by the way. Hey, YouTube, uh, don't ban me, bro. Um, in, in, in the very fair election, uh, very, very proper, with no irregularities whatsoever, wink, wink, honk, honk, um, there, there were things that went on that s disturbed certain people in the population. You have an individual, and there's only one of them, because there are only two people here eligible for the position. One of these individuals is not going to expand SCOTUS. The other one won't say whether or not he intends to do so, and in, in fact is being goaded by his own party. Uh, the, the many members want him to do so. To expand SCOTUS as a legal workaround, to permanently subjugate the judiciary to the executive branch, essentially nullifying the need for a Supreme Court altogether, by the way, for political reasons. The precedent it would set would be nation-killing. The precedent it would set would be, it'd be uh, the, the worst travesty and injustice of, of at least this century uh, within politics. It would, be, it would be blatantly a, a terrible idea. Essentially what you're saying is that any president, as long as they have the will of the legislator and a simple majority, can run roughshod over the Constitution any way that they happen to want for purely political reasons, and that's perfectly okay, without giving any compelling reason whatsoever as to the necessity of growing or shrinking the court. It doesn't really make sense. The judiciary is specifically there to try to stop unconstitutional legislation and executive action. It's there as a stopgap against the other branches of government. If those branches, for purely political reasons, attempt to subjugate SCOTUS, it would lead to a constitutional crisis. It could lead to a civil war. I think that SCOTUS should act in pragmatic benefit of the nation and in pragmatic benefit of the standing of their court and defend themselves against a potential rogue uh, executive branch and decide the election in that manner. And of course, if you look at the actual Constitution, if you look at the Texas case, it does have legal merit. This is not about rigging or tabulation errors or anything like that. It's not even really about the election results in and of themselves. It's purely procedural. This decision is purely procedural, and it's funny how you've seen over the last month the evolution of all of these cases from their initial claims, which were kind of wacky with like the Sydney, Sydney Powell you know, Kraken bullshit, uh, up till now where it's, it's largely constitutional arguments. This is what this represents, but you need a proper plaintiff. The court, this is another thing that people don't often understand about courts. You need to have a complaint being made by a proper party. You, the court can't simply look at a piece of legislation from a hundred years ago and unilaterally decide one day to nullify it. They have to have an, an actual aggrieved party. They can't simply take up any issue that they want under the sun based on a simple 5-4 majority saying that they should. The Supreme Court can, can, cannot uh, 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 operate in that manner. This is why it was always funny. Remember when Kavanaugh was there uh, being considered? And they're like, well, if he gets on the court, he's going to take Roe v. Wade and destroy it. No, the court has to take up a case against Roe v. Wade first for that to even be a feasible possibility. And I found it funny that his first major decision, of course, was a 180 from that, actually refusing to hear cases that could have endangered abortion. It's interesting how the liberals are consistently wrong on judicial matters. I think that SCOTUS tossing this case procedurally is correct, although you know, it would have been nice if it had gone forward. Um, but I don't think you've seen the end of it. I think they will probably retool the basic same claim, which has the same basic legal basis, they'll just have to find someone who's actually aggrieved. Those people will have to come from within the states that were that are initially being uh, complained against. I don't think it could be some random Texan, because they're not, I mean, you can, you, a Texan can't sue Pennsylvania based on its state laws. It would have to come from within those states. Thankfully, there are plenty of people within those states, many millions of them, who can potentially sign on to such a thing. I also think at this particular time, people should be contacting their representatives and governors and asking them to try to compel SCOTUS to, to give closure on this. The decision itself matters considerably less than the decision is actually issued for the purposes of holding the nation together. 
you've got Texas and other states openly fomenting uh, uh, secessionary rhetoric at this point. And not just like, oh, well, a group of cowboy hat wearers with lassos and stuff started talking about the Lone Star State and the need to return to the Texas Republic. No, no, I mean, I mean legislators, people in government, people with official taxpayer-funded positions are at least so, sort of in a sideways manner talking about secession uh, along with these other states. Now, while I don't think that's actually going to happen, that tends to be a relatively limited proportion of the population, it's no secret that at this particular point, we have at least as much social alienation as the worst moments we've had in the last hundred years. And it is approaching, although it's still a distance off, the rhetoric you saw during the antebellum period. The, the rhetoric that you saw in the political circles over the slave debate, uh, over secession then, uh, over state sovereignty versus federalism, you're beginning to see that kind of rhetoric. Well, I don't, well, my hope is, and, and my expectation is, if I was a betting man, there won't be a civil war over the issue of the 2020 election. It's moving towards that direction in such a way that it makes enough cause for concern to want cooler heads to prevail. And it is possible. Look, war breaks out when two states fail diplomacy. Civil war breaks out when states, federal government, some state body internally fails to, to negotiate with the public and do what it needs to do. It's a failure of statism. It's a failure of statehood. When you have a divisive incoming administration, probably, which is the, the Beijing Biden administration, that wants to run roughshod over the Constitution and won't even tell people whether it intends to do that by stacking the judiciary, that causes problems. That sort of moronism needs to be reined in. That's about all. Peace out.